Today we're using the new King of Budget Baller Gaming CPUs, and I'm gonna make this entire build guide for this CPU as easy to copy as possible. This is the Ryzen 5 7400F, which as of right now is the cheapest way to jump onto the newest AM5 platform. So in this video, I'll be showing you how I build a PC around it, and we're gonna be benchmarking the heck out of it, as well as comparing it against the more popular 7500F, and those results are pretty interesting. Per usual, I'll also include the condensed down PC building only version of the live stream so you can see exactly how I assembled it. And I'll also have a cheat sheet down in the description with way more information about copying this build if that's what you wanna do. Real quickly, today's video is sponsored by Okonos and specifically their new Aqua 9 and Aqua 93 cases. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, Okonos has been one of the very few PC hardware companies that I've actually been rooting for and I'm glad we're finally doing a sponsorship. I've already been talking very positively about what this new case company has been doing, specifically in the budget case realm, way before them ever sending me money. Their budget models have been disrupting the market and it's been hard to use anything else and now with these new cases, they're jumping into the higher end arena. This Aqua 93 is a a beautiful fish tank style with all glass up at the top, comes included with two pre-installed ARGB fans, and it leaves a perfect spot to mount a 360 mil radiator for a beautiful look. They also have this Aqua 9, which I recently built inside of, and this one has a bit more cooling power because it comes included with five pre-installed ARGB fans, and it also has a spot to mount a radiator like I did here at the top. Both of these cases are ATX size, provide a good start in the back for cable management, and they have a really clean ARGB strip on the angled PSU basement. I'll have a link to where you can pick them up down in the description. All right, so jumping straight into the parts list, the new potential king of gaming CPUs is the Ryzen 5 7400F. For $122 on paper, this is supposed to be just a slightly downclocked version of the already super valuable Ryzen 5 7500F, but it's unfortunate that it's only available on AliExpress as of right now. At the time of producing this video, I actually see the price dropping even further under $120. I'll have a link to it down in the description along with every other part that I'm talking about. Now, there is one other downfall with the 7400F that I was expecting Thing, but it turns out that it's not that big of a deal. One of the cost-saving measures that AMD apparently did was instead of using the normal solder compound underneath the IHS and on top of the chip, they actually used normal thermal paste, which isn't nearly as good. Before our testing, I was afraid that that would cause this to just instantly shoot up to 100 degrees Celsius and then thermal throttle. Thankfully, that doesn't happen. Well, not exactly, kind of. We'll go over that full thermal benchmarking and comparison with the 7500F in just a bit. Let's first work our way through the parts list. For the motherboard, this may seem a bit weird at first, but I have an explanation. This is the ASRock B850 M X Wi-Fi, and honestly, it's one of the first B850 boards that I've even used. There isn't a big difference, if at all, between B650 and B850, at least not a difference that I personally really care about for budget builds, but for whatever reason, this was actually the cheapest AM5 non-A620 micro TX board when I was searching. I have no idea how this is happening. Typically, the newest chipset boards come at a premium price when they first launch, but so far, this appears to be a new, reliable option for budget builds at only $110 on Amazon. Next up, we have the RAM, and this is the Silicone Power 2x16GB DDR5 kit clocked at 6,000 megahertz with a CL rating of 30. As long as you search on PC Part Picker for those exact specifications, it doesn't really matter which kit you go with. This Silicone Power one is usually just the cheapest, so that's why I went with it for $85. Bucks. After that, we have the SSD, and if you were watching the stream, which was over on my Twitch channel, I'm always running a Game of PC giveaway over there, by the way, you'll remember that I actually didn't have the SSD because it was still in the process of shipping. I don't have any clips of me installing it, so sorry about that, but this is just a Clev Crash C910 one terabyte NVMe Gen 4 model that's easy to find around 50 bucks. Just like the RAM, the specs are more important than the actual model for these budget builds, and I'll have links to alternatives that I consider in the cheat sheet, which again is linked down below. And finally, to wrap up the motherboard prep, the last part on here is the CPU cooler, and we're going with the tri and tested Vitro V5. I wanted to use an all black ARGB design to match with our case, which we'll definitely be talking about in just a second. But yeah, this V5 has been one of the best options to accomplish that for several years, and it's always available for less than $30. Now that the motherboard is ready to rock, let's move on to the power supply, and this is the MSI Mag A650 GL. This is honestly a bit overkill for a budget build, depending on who you ask. It's a tier B fully modular unit that's honestly not super necessary for a budget build, but at the same time, it is perfectly fine. If you ask SPL, 
Bell, the creator of the new PSU tier list, which is on zttbuildhelp.com, he'll tell you that you probably shouldn't go lower than tier B for any gaming PC. For me, any build under like $1,000 or so, I think is fine for tier C because I did have to pay a little extra for this $70 unit and that extra money could have gone towards a more performance impacting component. The extensions that I plugged into this power supply also aren't helping performance, but you know my motto, aesthetics over everything. Well, except for the pure performance type builds, which this one, it's definitely not. I was specifically going for a good old fashioned red and black color scheme build and these Asia Horse cable extensions are definitely worth it for 26 bucks. It just looks so good adding that splash of color for the four plus four CPU connector, 24 pin motherboard connector and the dual six plus two going into the GPU. And speaking of which for a budget AM5 build, I can't think of any better option than a used RX 6700 XT. This model is the XFX Swift 309 model, which is a three fan design. And I snagged this used off Jawa for $255. Per usual, if I'm looking for a good used GPU deal, I'm not only going to Jawa before anywhere else, but I'm also looking for the official Jawa account before I look at the other sellers. This is usually where I'll find the best prices. And it's honestly the safest bet too, because this is actually the Jawa team selling it. And for 255 bucks, it most likely doesn't get better than this, especially during the GPU shortage that we're now going through. At the time of recording, the new GPU market is completely dried up and it's only a matter of time before good used GPU deals like this are gone as well. The 6700 XT isn't 100% super important in this type of video because I'm mostly focused on testing out this new 7400F. But if you're copying this at home, it's definitely something to shoot for it, but that cheat sheet will have some alternatives as well. And finally, the last component we have is to actually house everything and go figure, I'm actually using an Okonos case, which I promise you, I did not plan to match up with their sponsorship on this video. This is the Okonos Cypress 3. And I'm telling you, this is some of the best micro ATX value that you can find for $60. Okonos has been making other budget cases that I typically use really hard to choose now because this one, for example, has a very clean all black design, a great form factor, and four pre-installed ARGB fans. The cable management is a little tricky just because of how many cables there are in the back with all these fans. But if you can get past that, it's a really solid budget option. One other thing that Okonos focuses on is including a USB-C port in the front. That's definitely not something that you often see on the more affordable cases. And with our B850 motherboard, we actually have a port for it so we can use it. With that being said, here's what the final parts list is looking like. And this one comes to be right around $800. If you're trying to copy this, there will be a little bit of flexibility depending on if you use some alternative parts. But if you copy this parts list to a T, as of right now, you should be able to get this within 10 or $20 or so. And again, if you need the full step-by-step -step PC building video of putting all these parts together, that video is already posted on the ZTT Extras channel. Now let's hop into some benchmarking. And before we just show the normal games that we usually run, let's check out to see if that temperature really is an issue or not. We first fired up Cinebench 2024 with the CPU stress test because this will just blast the utilization to 100% the entire time. As we expected, that CPU temp jumped right up to the high 80s and after a while, it stayed at about 89 degrees Celsius. As far as I know though, it wasn't really thermal throttling. It was just getting up to a really high temperature and staying there. Now in actual gaming where the CPU is almost never even close to 100% utilization, like here in Marvel Rivals, it was only at the low to mid 70s. Counter-Strike 2 was in the low 70s and with Black Ops 6, it was in the mid 70s as well. These are all perfectly fine temperatures. And although we can clearly tell it's not as good of cooling as the 7500F, all this testing is done with a $28 single tower air cooler. So if you really wanted to, you can drop those temperatures down with a better cooler. I wouldn't consider this a major issue at all right now, especially since we're just using a budget cooler. Now, performance wise, compared against the 7500F, the results are pretty good as well because in most games, the difference wasn't that big. In Marvel Rivals with 1080p and high settings, we got 96 FPS with the 7400F and that only jumped up to 99 FPS with the 7500F. And in Hogwarts Legacy, the FPS went from 92 to 98 FPS in 1080p high. In some games we tested, the 7400F actually did better than the 7500F, but that's only because some games are harder to test and run and get consistent numbers. But that just highlights that there is such a small difference between those two CPUs. But now for some individual benchmarks of just our completed build with the 7400F, here's Delta Force with a very impressive 1080p ultra settings getting an average FPS of 126. Here's Cyberpunk using 1080p Ultra, believe it or not, and the average was 89. And here's Black Myth Wukong hitting 70 FPS with 1080p high settings. That's very impressive for an $800 PC that's not even tuned for pure performance. Here's the rest of the games that we tested. And just as a reminder, you can see our video recordings of all these games with our dedicated benchmarking video that we just uploaded to the ZTD Extras channel. For a quick recap of what I just explained, the shortcomings of the 7400F are in fact not that big of a deal if you're using your PC just like a typical gamer would. And as long as you aren't using a $6 Walmart cooler, you should
should be good to go. If you find the price difference between the 7400F and 7500F like 10 bucks, then I'd probably still recommend getting the better 7500F. But if that gap is like $30, then I'd probably lean more towards the cheaper 7400F to save some money. I definitely wanna try to put this CPU in an ultimate AM5 pure performance budget build guide video next. But if you wanna see my most recent pure performance build, then the video for that is on the screen right now.